Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on the two sample t test. The main question for this mini lecture is the miles per gallon for Japanese versus American cars, and the main question is whether they're the same or different. We can phrase this in two distinct statistical ways. The first is to phrase it as a hypothesis test, where the null hypothesis here is that the mean miles per gallon in these two groups, Japanese and American, are the same. And the alternative is that they're different. The second way we can phrase the question is just as an estimation question, that is, what is the difference in mean miles per gallon between Japanese and American cars? So in order to answer this question, we need to go out and get a random sample of Japanese and American cars. So let's say that we've done that, and here's a picture of the data itself. Where here on the x-axis, we have the Japanese cars on the left and the American cars on the right. On the y-axis, we have the actual miles per gallon for those cars. Each dot on the plot represents a car, and the box plot uh, overlaying those dots are just the box plots for those two different groups, the Japanese and American cars. So it seems pretty clear from this picture that, on average, that Japanese cars seem to have a higher uh, miles per gallon than the American cars, at least in this sample. And so then the question is, or is this statistically significant, or could this have happened just by chance, even if the two groups of cars had the same average miles per gallon? All right, so we're going to be using a two-sample t-test to answer this question, and that test requires some assumptions. And before we get into that assumption, I want to bring in some notation. So the notation here is going to be that the subscripts 1 represent the Japanese cars, and 2 represent the American cars. And J here then represents each individual car in those two groups. So here's the assumption for the two-sample t-test. That is, the Japanese cars are independent and identically distributed from a normal distribution with a mean and a variance. And the American cars are independent, identically distributed from a normal distribution with a different mean but the same variance. And there's the Japanese cars and American cars are statistically independent from each other. So those are the assumptions. We can rewrite the hypotheses on the previous page using the notation we've introduced here. The null hypothesis is that mu1 and mu2 are the same, and the alternative is that they are different. Or alternatively, we could subtract mu2 from both sides and say the null is that mu1 minus mu2 is 0, and mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to 0, is the alternative. All right, so we're going to be going through the statistical hypothesis first. In order to answer this uh, hypothesis question, we need to create a test statistic. And the test statistic we're going to be using here is the following. It's y1, so let's just introduce what they are. So y1 bar is the sample average in mile, miles per gallon of the Japanese cars and y bar 2 is a sample average miles per gallon of the American cars. Mu1 and mu2 are these two parameters that we introduced on the previous slide. That is the true mean for the Japanese cars and the true mean for the American cars. Finally, we have to calculate this standard error of the difference in averages. We do so by using the what's called the pooled standard deviation, SP, multiplied by the square root of the sum of the inverses of the number of cars in each group. So n1 represents the total number of Japanese cars in uh, our sample, and n2 is the total number of American cars in our sample. SP, this pooled standard deviation, is calculated using this formula. It's basically just a weighted average of the sample variance, that's s1 squared for the Japanese cars, and the sample variance of the American cars, s2 squared. So that makes S1 be the sample standard deviation of the Japanese cars, and S2 being the sample standard deviation of the American cars. All right, so here's the test statistic. How do we use this test statistic? Well, in order to construct a p-value, we assume that the null hypothesis is true. And the null hypothesis is true when mu1 is equal to mu2. So when mu1 is equal to mu2, this term right here drops out, and everything else that's in here we can calculate based on the formulas in the previous slide and the sample averages. And if the null hypothesis is true, then this quantity right here has a t distribution with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. So now we're going to construct our p-value, where our p-value is 
finding a value that's as or more extreme than what we actually observed if the null hypothesis is true. So that is answering the question, what's the probability that this t distribution is greater than the test statistic that we actually saw, or is less than the negative of the test statistic that we actually saw. A picture might help here. So here's a picture. We have the solid line is the probability density function for the t distribution. So that defines which values are likely and not likely under the t distribution. This should look a lot like the bell curve that you're used to seeing for the normal distribution. And that's because it's very similar to it. Uh, and then the red area is the area for this p-value. Uh, in this case, we've taken a value, a test statistic value of 1.5. So the red area there, if we add it all up or we integrate under the curve, that's the area, that's the probability of seeing a test statistic as or more extreme than what we actually observed if that test statistic was 1.5. Alright, so that's the area that we're trying to calculate with this p-value. Uh, we can actually do the calculation by hand if we want to, and in order to do so, we need six numbers. We need the total sample size of the two groups. So there were 79 Japanese cars and 246 American cars. We need the mean in both groups. So the mean miles per gallon of Japanese cars was 30.5, and of American cars was 20.1. And we need the standard deviation in both groups. It was 6.11 for Japanese and 6.44 for American. All right, so then we go ahead and just do the calculations for the quantities that are important. In this case, the pooled standard deviation is 6.34. The standard error of the difference in averages is 0.82. And the T statistic that's of interest is 12.6. So now the question is finding the p-value. And the p-value is just the probability that the test statistic uh, that we see, uh, sorry, this should be the absolute value over here, the probability of seeing uh, on being both sides uh, is in this case, you would typically look this up in a uh, table or using some statistical software, uh, but it's very small. All right, alternatively, that was using the statistical hypothesis. Alternatively, we could look at the estimation question and just say, well, what is the difference between Japanese and American cars in terms of the miles per gallon, and we're going to quantify our uncertainty using a confidence interval. In this case, we're con this is the generic formula for constructing a 100 times 1 minus alpha confidence interval, where alpha is typically said to be, typically taken to be 0.05. So here's the formula. Notice it uses the difference in the sample averages, it uses the standard error of that difference, and then it uses this statistic right here. Not statistic, this quantity right here, this t cutoff quantity. All right, so for those who aren't familiar with this notation, plus or minus here, that's the symbol for plus and minus. This quantity right here, this t subscript df, is just the critical value such that this is true. And this, again, is something that you're going to be looking up uh, on a table or using some statistical software to calculate. And if, in this case, if alpha is 0.05 and the degrees of freedom are 326, right, that's n1 plus n2 minus 2, then it turns out that this t statistic is 1.97. So this term right here, which you'll look up in a table using statistical software, is just 1.97. So we plug the rest of the numbers in and we find that the confidence interval is 8.73 to 11.9. All right, so what does that mean? That means that we are 95% confident that, on average, Japanese cars get between 8.73 and 11.9 more miles per gallon than American cars. All right, so this is a bit about how to construct uh, confidence intervals and p-values by hand. More often, we'll actually use statistical software to do it for us. So I'm going to give an example of how to do this in uh, SAS. So in SAS, we can first read the data in and then use PROC t-test to find a t-test. Um, I'll go into more detail in lab about what this uh, actually means. But for now, here's the code to actually just run the t-test. And here's the result. All right, so the result from SAS is very verbose, and you have to know exactly where you're looking. So right now, what you want to be looking at is this pooled line. So this pooled line and this pooled line here. All right, so this pooled line right here gives the uh, p-value for the hypothesis test. So there's our t-statistic, 12.62. Our degrees of freedom were 326. 
and the p-value was less than 0 0.001, just as we found in our example. If you want to construct the confidence interval, you look at this pooled line right here. So the confidence interval here is 8.73 to 11.9. And we'll talk in future uh, mini lectures about what the rest of this output belongs. But for right now, here's the p-value to answer our statistical hypothesis, and here's the confidence interval to answer the question of what is the difference. All right, so if we were going to write this up as a statistical conclusion, we might write it in this fashion, that the mean miles per gallon of Japanese cars is significantly different than mean miles per gallon of American cars using a two-sample t-test with a test statistic 12.62 and a p-value of 0 0.0001. And also, that Japanese cars get on average an average of 10.3 with a confidence interval, 95% confidence interval between 8.7 and 11.9, more miles per gallon than American cars.